Uh, 2 Timothy chapter three, 2 Timothy chapter three, I'm gonna read verse one through five. Verse one through five. And then I'm gonna sit down and kind of just have a bit of a conversation with you guys. Is that all right? Cool. All right, 2 Timothy chapter three, verse one through five. I'm reading from the NLT. If you don't have a Bible, we have it back behind me on the iPhone 30. You ready? Verse one says this. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very, someone say very, Very. difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. If you're standing next to one of those people, no, let's pray. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is alive. Thank you that your word is for us. Thank you, Lord, that you reveal yourself through your word. Each and every time we open it up, we get to see you. We get to experience you. Uh, More than anything else, Lord, we want to be changed by you. Lord, we want to walk in the purposes that you have for us. We want to think the way you want us to think. We want to live the way you want us to live. So, Lord, let your word speak to us and change us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a seat. Gosh, some of you guys feel so far. My neck is too old for this, but it's okay. <sighs> nah. He would know better. He's been here since he was negative. Um, uh, so question, someone, uh, maybe you can raise your hand. I think it might be easier to raise your hand. Raise your hand and give me, is someone give me willing to, is willing to give me one characteristic of a good Christian? One characteristic of a good Christian. Go, Adrian. Loving. Go, Reese. Faithful. I like it, Carrie. Selfless. Go, Daisy. Loves God. Loves God. I like it. Daniel. Humble. Woof. I love that. Cool, Alice. Understanding. Okay, back there from, I, I, I don't think I can overlook this person. Aria. Grateful. Wow, what a scholar. My goodness, such depth. The glory is on you, girl. Okay, one more, one more, right here. Forgiving, I love it. Um, one more, Zach. You have a verse for us? Self-control, the fruit are coming. I love it. So, those are the things some of the things that you guys named off, all the things you guys named off, I, I do believe that those are some of the things, the characteristics, I, I guess you could say that mark, mark a, a good Christian person. Now, here's the thing. Do any of the things that we say, that, that, that was said here, do any of those make us Christian? No. But, but are, the thing, are those some of the things that you believe that a person who calls himself a Christian should reflect? Yeah. Um, Interesting enough, as we look at this list here in the passage, everything that's listed off are things that I would say are opposite, opposite things. Hey, y'all, jump in with your quad, jump in with your quad. Kevin and Julian, jump in with your quad. And we love you, Raylan. Um. We see these things that seem to be opposite patterns, opposite descriptions of a person who lives for and loves Jesus. But here's an interesting thought. When Paul was writing this to Timothy, do we believe that as Paul is naming these things off, that Paul has this mindset or understanding, hey, these are only gonna be patterns, mindsets, strongholds, or challenges for people who don't love Jesus? Or can we be, like Daniel said, humble enough for a moment to say, 
unfortunately, there's times where I've fallen into one or more of these patterns. But at the same time, too, there are people who choose a lifestyle, choose a lifestyle where they, where, where, uh, they don't follow Jesus, they don't live according to his word. Some have maybe heard his truth and, and have made a choice. Some, some that, that I believe there are people uh, still in this world who, who so far have never heard the gospel. I, I, I do think that there will come a day where everyone on earth does hear the gospel, but, but, but they live according to some of these things on this list, but I do, I kind of want to break it down just for, a, just for a moment as we look through it because I don't want us to find, find ourselves in a place where we feel that we are above these things or that we are not uh, possibly susceptible to these things. But at the same time, I, do, I, do, uh, I, will, I will bring it home and, and, and give some hope and, and, and give some understanding. But I wanna go down this list just, just briefly because um, I, I know uh, there are teenagers in, 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 in Yuma County that, that deal with these things, but none of them that come to City Youth, thankfully, thankfully. The kids that come to City Youth, they're, they're perfect. I don't know how this happened, God, but thank you so much. What a blessing. Um, at the top of this list, at the top of the list, it says that there will be people who love only themselves. A lot of scholars, when you study this passage, a lot of scholars say that the rest of this list may not be in order besides the first one. It says the Apostle Paul was very intentional about putting this first. And I'm going to even read a, 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 a quote from a theologian, and he said this, love of self is the basic of sin, or you can say the basis of sin, from, from with all others flow, from which, like, the love of self is where all the rest of our sin flows from. That's what this quote is saying. The moment a man makes his own will the center of life, divine and human relationships are destroyed. Obedience to God and charity to men both become impossible. The essence of Christianity is not the enthronement, but the obliteration of self. Not the enthronement of self, not making me number one, but similar to those scriptures that say, take up your cross and follow me. I must decrease so that he may increase. Less of me, more of you. Sitting at the foot of the table. You guys with me? But if you think about some of the selfish decisions that you've made, if you think about some of the broken relationships that you've dealt with, uh, there's someone in that relationship, there's some, there's some portion of you in that decision, there's some portion of you in that process that, have, that, that you, you, in your processing, in your thinking, in your following of feelings, in that moment you made a decision, I am the most important in this situation. Now guys, please, please hear me, please hear my heart. You know, I love you. And I never want you to put yourself in positions where you're gonna be abused, and I think we know that. I never want you to put yourself in positions where you're gonna be taken, taken advantage of or put yourself in harm's way. That's not what I'm talking about. But, but, but I, I do believe you guys understand what I'm saying, where we, we, we have been called by God to live a selfless life but he gives us the opportunity to live that selfless life knowing that we are in the, the covering and protection of him, covering protection of who, who he is. But, but the first on this list is love only themselves. The next one is love their money. We've been hearing about that for weeks. Matter of fact, if you, if you haven't really heard it unpacked about the love of money, uh, go to the City Youth page on, on YouTube and listen to the message that Kyla preached on it. It was very, very good. Talking about the love of money being the root of all evils. Boastful and proud. I think boastful and proud is something that's beginning to mark our society. Unfortunately, I am all about social media and, and I think those things are cool. I think it's great tools, but, but, but it's interesting that, that, that we are beginning to get to know each other more on platforms versus in person. And, 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 and oftentimes even a person's value is based on, on how much they can um, produce on a platform. What's, their value is based on a number. Their value is based on a check mark. Their value is based on a decimal. And, 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 and if, we're, if we're not careful, if we fall in love with that mindset and mentality, we're gonna become people who are boastful and proud about everything we do because we think that that builds our value. Scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents. I'm not gonna preach on that because none of you guys have ever experienced that in your life. In fact, tomorrow I'm doing parent calls because I'm gonna find out if that's true, all right? Just kidding, I wouldn't do that. Your small group leaders are, all right? <laughs> do it. You guys trying to get Christmas presents or something? I've been good this week. Um, disobedient to their parents. It's interesting though, here, here's, here's the thing though. 
You notice the Apostle Paul includes disobedient to your parents in the same list as scoffing at God and ungrateful and nothing sacred. Kind of like, kind of like honor your father and mother is listed above m- murder and stealing and killing on the Ten Commandments. That's how important honor of our parents is. And I don't want to go too deep into it, but I want you to guys to understand something. Even if your parents give you poor advice, even if your parents are not with you, even if your parents made a decision not to raise you, even if your parents are living a lifestyle that you know is not according to scripture, you can honor people, you can honor people in your heart and in your mind, regardless of the circumstances and the lifestyle that they live. Honor and following are two different things. Honor and modeling after are two different things. Honor, honor up, honor down, honor all around, guys. All right? Why was that funny? Oh, I thought it was good. Ungrateful, nothing sacred, nothing sacred, unloving, unforgiving, slander others. Oh, gosh, it makes me crazy. Slander others. No self-control, cruel and hate what is good, betray friends, be reckless, puffed up with pride, love pleasure, rather than God. We're gonna talk about that a bit when we get a couple couple weeks down the line. We're gonna really hit on that a a, a bit when we start talking about purity and different things. And act religious, but reject the power that can make them godly. Unfortunately, too many of us have been in that position where we begin to look the part and become really good church chins, but but still are not a Christian following Christ. We're really good at raising our hands and jumping up and down on a Wednesday and a Sunday and we can shake hands at the front door and get the shirt and all the things, but, but our life is still not surrendered to Jesus. There's nothing about the patterns of our lifestyle. There's nothing about our mindset. There's nothing about uh, the seat of our heart that reflects Jesus, but we can look the part when we want to and need to. Now, many of us have been there. doesn't mean you have to stay there. And, and the good thing is that the, the Bible says that his grace is sufficient for us and, and, and God knows, he knows our hearts, he knows our thoughts and he forgives us, but, but he also gives us a chance, just like a loving father, to run back into his arms and, 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 and make that true confession and commitment. But, but we don't wanna be a people that act religious but reject the power that can make us godly, make us righteous, make us live the life that he's called us to live. So we're saying all those things, all those scary, crazy things, and I like the how they talk about in the last days. What do they mean by the last days? The last days means... Uh, some people will say the last, de- last days are like, the last days are now. You can look in Revelations. You can look through the Bible, all the things, the wars, rumors of wars, and all kind of things and decision makings that people have. These are the last days. Um, guys, I'm 39. It's been the last days since I first stepped foot in church, you know? I, I was scared to go to hell when I was like two years old, and that was like in the 80s, all right? But um, here's, here's what we say. Here's, if we wanted to try to categorize the last days, I, I like to summarize it as this. As soon as Jesus ascended to heaven, the last days began. Why? Why would I say that? Because ever since then, we've been anticipating his return. And now, do I believe we're closer now than we were 15 years ago? Of course we are. We can see that in scripture. But, but, but I, think, I think the last days began when people had the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and receive his spirit and to reject his, 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 his calling and his nudging and, and say no. And, and we, be, we begin to see people live that lifestyle. Now, here's the truth. I didn't have to convince anybody in here that this list is relevant to today. I didn't have to convince any of you guys. I didn't have to convince any of you guys. So, so we do know that this list is of today, which means that as the Apostle Paul's writing to Timothy so many, so many years ago, we, we, can, we can look and say, hey, we're living in that time. We're living in that time. Even though this was written that long ago, this is a time that we're living in because maybe I'm challenged with it or I see other people that are living that lifestyle. But here's the great news. There's also scripture that defines you believers, because I don't want you to, even though if, if, if you may have had these challenges and different things, first of all, you have to know one grace is available to you and more importantly, sanctification is available to you. What does that mean? That you can say yes to Jesus and the more you say yes to Jesus and have times of prayer, times in his word, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you, he begins to make you more like him. Salvation is in a moment, sanctification is a process. Salvation is in a moment. Salvation is when we say yes to Jesus once and for all, forgives us of our sins, we have a place in heaven. Sanctification is a process. That's available to all of us. And guess what? The more, the more you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you and change you, the less these things become a challenge. The less these things can, can uh, occupy your mind and your heart. But here's, here's what I want to declare over, over us because here, here's the cool thing. Whenever we see scripture that defines the people that live opposite of the way of, of God, we can also see scripture that defines the people who who do follow God, who, who, who are called by his name, who have made a decision to say yes to him. And I love it, it's in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says this, but you are not like that. You 
are not like that. Jonathan, you are not like that. Damien, you are not like that. Joshua, you are not like that. Victory, you are not like that. Kira, not sure. You are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. You can look at this list and you can say, man, my generation is challenged. Man, this is an attack. Man, these patterns are so familiar. Man, I know people who are facing those things, but you can also hold on to the promises of scripture and say, but I don't have to be like that. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me. Thank you, Lord, that I can carry myself like royalty. We, we, we gave this whole talk one time when we were unpacking this passage is how, how people who are in royalty carry themselves a bit differently. Matter of fact, they carry themselves much differently. Why? Because they understand their value. They understand who they are placed under. They understand who they represent and they understand that the eyes are on them. A royal priesthood. But the most beautiful part about this whole thing is that it doesn't say that you chose to be become a part, a part of that. It doesn't say that you stopped dead in your tracks and turned around. It says that he called you out of darkness. Don't ever think that you made a decision for Jesus. Jesus made a decision for you. And because Jesus made a decision for you, Jesus can't and won't undecide. So even though you may have challenges, even though you may have struggles, I want you to understand this, that Jesus made a decision for you. He called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. And the last time I checked, light and darkness can never coexist. And we see that in Genesis chapter one. You guys with me? Still good? What is that verse there for? Oh, I love this. Okay. One more verse. I'm going to give you guys four quick points. I'm going to get you to your groups, okay? I'm going to go way over time. So I'm going to go faster. All right. One thing that Moses says that I think is incredibly beautiful for us to understand when it comes to living this sanctified, set-apart life. Exodus 33, verse 12 through 16. Moses, if you've never heard of this guy, Moses is the one that brought the children of Israel, God's chosen people, the the Hebrews, out of captivity in Egypt and took them to the promised land. Moses is that that guy. Moses is the one who saw the burning bush. Matter of fact, I think there was some emojis about him, all right? He was the one who saw the burning bush. That burning bush let him know, God is with you. Go and rescue my people. And he took them uh, to the promised land. But uh, I love, this is around the time where he was chosen. I love what Moses says. It says, one day Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me, I know you by name. I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your way so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you. What a great word. I will personally go with you. Some of you guys have to think about this. When you walk on your campus, on your school campus, the Lord wants you to know, I will personally go with you. For those of you that are living in a home with unsaved parents, the Lord is saying, I will personally go with you. For those who are seniors in high school and and you're worried about uh, your, your walk with Jesus when you leave and go to college, I will personally go with you. I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. I love that. There's another version that says, if your presence doesn't go ahead of us, I don't wanna go. I love that, and I believe that for our youth ministry. Lord, the day your presence isn't here, we'll shut this thing down. I really mean it. The day we don't experience his presence here, we're here, this, we, we might as well go, go meet at the fun factory or something. It's his presence that brings us together. It's his presence that changes us. It's his presence that's the reason that we truly gather. And I love how Moses says this after. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people if you don't go with us? For your presence amongst us sets sets your people and me apart from all the people on the earth. Your presence among us sets us apart from all the people on the earth. Do we, do, I'm telling you, city youth, if we want to be a people that doesn't have to go battle after battle after battle, day after day after day, with this list that was listed, that truly does, the enemy does want to use to attack your mind, attack your heart, and attack your spirit, you know what we need to do? We need to spend time in his presence. 
spend time in his presence. And I love how Moses says, if I don't have your presence, I'm no different than anyone else. That's the truth, guys. If I don't have, I, I, I look at a lot of people, broken marriages, abusive people, people uh, un, un, unfortunately living uh, crazy lifestyles. And, I, and you know what? I, I, I don't sit here and say like, huh, man, sucks for them. You know what I say? God, if it wasn't for you, that would be me. If it wasn't for his presence, if it isn't for his presence, we could rattle off that list and we, we'd be playing bad list bingo in here right now. But instead, his presence sets us apart. How do you know that you can live a set apart life? Because the Lord has chosen you to be in his presence. How do you know you don't have to fight the same battles as the person to your left and your right when you're living this life and in, in school and when you're in different work settings and different things? And I'm not saying you're gonna have a perfect life. I'm not gonna say you're not gonna fight battles, but how do you know you have the victory? Because of his presence. Because of his presence. So what do we do? I'm gonna give you four things. I'm gonna give you four things. Ready? Number one. Number one is this. Recognize and accept the call of God on our life. In order to live, to live set apart, the first thing we have to do is recognize and accept the call of God in our life. I'm talking to believers right now, okay? I'm talking to believers. I'm talking about people who've already accepted. Like the, the first thing is always salvation. Until, until you say yes to Jesus and, and, and accept the free gift of salvation and he fills you with his spirit, you actually can't function according to your purpose. You actually can't function. Uh, that's why I always tell, you know, sometimes there's, there's students and a, and a small group leader gets frustrated and like, man, they keep doing this. Keep doing I'm like, hey, have they accepted Jesus yet? No, not yet. Okay, well, then don't hold a non-believer to a believer's standard. Let the, they're, 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 they're figuring it out, okay? But they take a different approach if, you, if, you, if a person that confesses Christ, right? But if you're a person that confesses Christ, you have to recognize and accept the call of God on your life so you can begin to live set apart. John 15, 16 says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. God chose you. Number two is this, know and emulate Jesus. Know and emulate Jesus. Why do I say know and emulate? Because one, there's times people wanna live like Jesus, but they don't know how Jesus lived because they haven't taken the time to study the gospels. And then there's other times that people study the gospels and study the gospels and study the gospels, but don't go out and do any of the things that Jesus did. Some people call them fat Christians. What, some of you all popped your head up, listen. Fat Christians as in this. They consume, 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 and then hunker down. They don't go make a difference in anyone's lives. They don't go make a difference. Uh, they, don't, they don't go and show the love of Jesus. Anymore. But I, I truly believe that, that if you wanna live a set apart life, you wanna, you wanna be different than the world, you have to know and emulate Jesus. Luke 3, 8 says, prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Prove by the way you live. Number three, guard the call on your life. One, I said accept. Number three is guard the call in your life. What does it mean to guard the call in your life? You're gonna have to understand that sometimes there are settings, groups of people, circles, substances, and many other things that you have to say, that's not for me because of who God is. And I have to guard that call. Hey, I love you guys. I love this crew. But if we're gonna go there tonight, I need you to drop me off. There's Billy. Uh, where's Billy? Billy, Billy sang, sang tonight. Someone, someone, I'm not saying everybody has to be this be this extreme, but I, but I love it. So she's leading worship on, on, on Sunday morning and someone talked to her about doing something on a Saturday night this, 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 this coming weekend. They're like, hey, you wanna do this Saturday night? She's like, no, I gotta lead worship uh, uh, the next day. I, I, I like to lay low on Saturday nights just so, just so I can get my mind and my spirit and my heart right. Not only she's guarding the call, but she's actually guarding the, the anointing on her life. She wants to show up ready to, to pour out. And I'm not saying everybody has to do those things, but, 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 I, but I do think it's important for you to understand that there's a call on your life and God gives you the opportunity. Matter of fact, he gives you the responsibility to guard that call in your life. No, he's not gonna take your gifts from you, but you can see time and time and time in scripture where people are gifted and people are, 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 are uh, anointed to do certain things, but because they aren't guarding that call and guarding that anointing, uh, God has to say like, well, I think I need to work on you for a little bit more. Guys, guard the call in your life and you have to be okay with the fact that not everybody next to you has the same call. Guard that call in your life. First Corinthians 15, says, don't be fooled by, by those who say such things for bad company corrupts, corrupts good character. Philippians 4, 8, just write down Philippians 4, 8 because if you're ever struggling with your, with, with your mindset, it, 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 t it t gives you things to think about. It actually gives you things to think about. It says, it says fix your thoughts on, on, on these things. And the last one is this, because I don't want to go too, too, too late. Last one is this. So number one, 
recognize and accept the call of God on your life. Number two, know and emulate Jesus. Number three, guard the call on your life. And the last one is this, link yourself with Jesus followers. Link yourself with Jesus followers. Sometimes it's not okay to just link yourself with church kids. Link yourself with Jesus followers. People who are making a decision day in, day out. Hey, I understand we have a call. Hey, I, I think we should do a devotional together, whether it's online or, or in person. Link yourself with Jesus followers. Have a friend that can go out and have a good time with you, but also have a friend that'll send you a prayer when you need it. Have a friend that you can call that you know the advice they're gonna give you is never to harm you. It's always gonna turn you closer to Jesus. It's always gonna turn you closer to his word. Link yourself. That's why we do small groups every week. Some people are like, man, that's not the best use of your time. You need to preach and bring them to the altar. Yeah, I, I love preaching. I love having altar moments. But at the same time, when someone, when someone experiences an encounter with Jesus at the altar, the next thing they need is they need someone who actually does that life with them and walks them through that journey. Link with Jesus followers. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Link with people. There's another verse that talks about uh, how a true friend sticks closer than a brother. Iron sharpening iron. Link with Jesus followers. Link with Jesus followers. All right? We with it? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray. Quads, gather just for a moment. We'll, we'll, we'll do one question per quad and then we'll go to small groups. Good? All right, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word is alive. Thank you, Jesus, that you speak. Lord, despite anything that I said, I pray that you speak to the hearts and minds of every student here, every leader here, every guest. You speak. You have them hear what you want them to hear. Lord, we're thankful for your sacrifice on the cross for us. We're thankful that salvation was made available through you. We're thankful that we don't have to live a life according to the list that was listed. We don't have to let those strongholds control us. We don't have to let those mindsets control us, but we're thankful, God, that we can live a life of freedom because you chose us and because you called us. Lord, let us live a life that's set apart, not set apart for ourselves, but set apart for you so that we can do your will and live the purposes you've called us to. Thank you, Lord, for each person that's here. Thank you, Lord, for the hearts that have been changed. Thank you, Lord, for the minds that have been changed. In Jesus' name, amen.